So here in the US, it's probably safe to say that Mapo tofu is the probably the most popular Szechuan dish. And since I have a metric buttload of leftover tofu from a previous video in my fridge, I figured it would be fun to make it with you guys. So this one, Mabo tofu, is great to cook for any of any tofu haters out there, right? Anyone who thinks tofu is boring and bland, because this dish, Mabo tofu, is literally the exact opposite of bland. It couldn't get any less bland. Anyways, in Szechuan cooking, ma and la come together to create ma la, numbing and spicy, which is sort of the signature taste and uh, sensation that you get from eating Szechuan cooking. And mapo tofu fully encompasses ma and la, ma la. So you might be thinking to yourself, how how the hell is numbing like a good sensation that I want while I eat? Would, would that like numb the flavor, the taste of things? I mean, either that or you think I'm going to put novocaine in your tofu, which again, both valid, not the case. We're going to talk about both. So if you're spooked, don't run away. Okay, I'm going to spare you now. You can stop looking at my face. Let's cook. These are the ingredients that we're gonna need to make mabo tofu. This might look like a bunch of random stuff if you're not familiar, so let's run over a few of these ingredients before we start cooking. If you live near an Asian market, or better yet, if your city has a Chinatown, you should be able to find most of this stuff. Today we need some tofu, and if you want to make your own, I have a video all about how to do that. Tight. But store-bought works just fine too. I like medium firmness tofu for this dish. Another big player, Szechuan peppercorns. This ingredient is what's responsible for the numbing sensation in much of Szechuan cooking. Believe it or not, these aren't actually peppercorns, but a type of dried berry. Here on the left is Qingqing vinegar, aka Chinese black vinegar, then on the right, Shaoxiang rice wine. Black vinegar is usually made from wheat, barley, and a few other grains. Some people describe it as sort of a Chinese balsamic, and I do see what they mean, but I'm not sure I would compare the two like that. But if you pick some up, let me know what you think in the comments. Next is our light soy sauce and toasted sesame oil. Chinese light soy sauce is less viscous and saltier compared to thicker and richer dark soy sauce. The last ingredient I'll mention is dobanjang, a famous chili and broad bean paste. This stuff is a heavy hitter that marries the umami power of fermented broad bean with the spicy impact of chilies. And yeah, might be if I mispronounced anything there. I'm trying my best, man. And of course, when cooking Chinese food, it's cleaver time. This thing is a beast. Bet you didn't know your cleaver also doubles as a rear view mirror. <laughs> okay, anyways, this next step seems counterintuitive, but before we cook our tofu, we need to soak it in salty water. Soaking the tofu in hot, briny liquid helps draw out moisture from the surface of the tofu and lock in moisture trapped inside. Cut your tofu into one inch or 25 millimeter cubes, then salt a pot of water like you would pasta. The water should taste as salty as the ocean, or if you're lucky enough to have never swallowed seawater, it should make your cheeks puff a little bit. Bring the water up until it's just steaming, add the tofu in, then cut the heat and set the tofu aside. We're gonna come back to it later. Now we're gonna wanna toast the Szechuan peppercorns to coax out as much flavor as pas. Toast them in a dry pan over medium heat until you can really smell their aroma. After a minute or two, pop them in the mortar and pestle and smash them until they ground up. A spice grinder or a regular blender also gets the job done here too. Now mince up some garlic. We need that nice... Nice and minced, I guess, I guess. Dobanjang often comes in jars or bags like this. This paste contains chopped chilies and beans, and we need them a little more chopped-er, so, you know, just pop them out of the bag and run them over a few times with your knife. Three or four passes should do. Now we need to make what's called a slurry from equal parts cornstarch and water. This little mixture is going to help thicken the sauce up towards the end of the cooking process. All right, so cooking with a wok is meant to be hot and fast. This dish comes together super quick, so make sure you have all your mise en place nearby and ready to go. I'm using this nifty carbon steel wok from Maiden, but you don't need a wok for this. Just use a larger shallow pan if that's what you have. Add a bit of neutral oil to coat the ripping hot wok, then plop in the ground pork. Let the pork cook for three or four minutes, then in goes the dobanjang. The oil in the wok should be bright red from the chili paste, so don't worry if there seems to be a lot of oil in the pan. It's supposed to be like that. Just embrace the spicy, oily goodness. In goes three cloves of minced garlic and our cayenne pepper. Give that a mix and cook it for a minute or so. After a minute, pour in the sugs, light soy sauce, and the chicken stock. Uh, beef, pork, or veggie stock also works well for this. Now the Shawshank cooking wine. Sprinkle some of that right in there in the mix. 
All right, now it's time to introduce the tofu. Just drain it, make sure it's free from that salty water and dump it into the bubbling cauldron of goodness. Gently fold under the tofu and work it into the sauce. Really don't be too aggressive here. The idea is to keep the tofu as whole as possible and tofu is delicate, so be weary. Now we're at the home stretch. Just let this mixture ride for five or six minutes on medium high heat. We want the sauce to slightly reduce and all the flavors to come together. Oh yeah, she ready. After five minutes, the sauce should be ever so slightly thickened, but we still need it thicker. First, add in the Sichuan peppercorns, then hit it with the black vinegar. This is just black vinegar in a different container. Now, finish with the cornstarch slurry and lightly stir everything together. After a minute or so, cut the heat and pour in a tiny bit of sesame oil. You know, a little goes a long way with this stuff. We are now ready to plate or bowl in this, in this case. Feel free to garnish with whatever strikes your fancy. Scallions and chives are both great. I just so happen to have these Chinese chives on deck in the fridge, so I'm gonna use these. A very official and authentic way to test quality for this dish is the jiggle test. If your tofu jiggles like flubber on a massage chair, then you've done well. And yes, that was a flubber reference for those of you who are old enough to get that. Serve this stuff with white rice, and really the rest is instinct. Oh, and I lied about the jiggle test. The girlfriend test is probably the best way to judge quality. Let's see how I do. Pause for quick demonic distraction. I think I passed. Phew. So yeah, my first legit Mabo Tofu experience, I'll never forget it. Five or so years ago, I was sitting at Danny Bowen's Mission Chinese Food in the Mission in San Francisco, and it was delightful. I got that and some Kung Pao pastrami, another one of his famous dishes. And my mind was completely shot the second those peppercorns hit my tongue. It's like a wild sensation. It's delicious, I love it, I think you will too. Yeah, before that, I only had experienced Szechuan peppercorns once prior when I, when I attempted to make a Szechuan style stir fry in my college apartment kitchen for my girlfriend and myself didn't quite work out. Might have added like an actual handful of Szechuan peppercorns. It kind of felt like I took tiger balm and like rubbed it in my mouth and on my gums. I mean, thinking back, it was actually kind of a cool sensation, but it, it didn't really taste that good. Anyways, I hope I answered most of your questions regarding Mabo Tofu, and if you have any other questions, uh, you know, comment them below. I try to get back to all you guys as much as I can. So anyways, thanks for hanging and cooking with me, and I will see all of you next week. Toodaloo.